hey guys i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to see me as well as there's no problem with the audio or the video please do let me know hello everyone i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no problem with the audio or the video please do let me know hello everyone hello all clear okay that's great amazing i'm fine guys uh, how about you are you guys all right we'll be waiting for 5 more minutes so that everyone is able to join us and then we'll start with our today's class okay but i am also a bit tired <laughs> okay so uh, let's do one thing before starting so my plan was to start react today itself <clears throat> but i remembered that i haven't told you guys about the technology and everything that goes around in making a website and why react is the technology that we will be working upon so let's do one thing today we will start with the technologies like what are the different technologies that you need to learn to become a full stack engineer once we have dealt with that from tomorrow onwards we'll be starting off with react okay so today uh, let's let's uh, have a great session okay let's let's try to understand how much as we can okay how do we get the certificate so based on your attendance as well as your project that you will be submitting uh, the project will be doing it on the last two days okay you don't have to worry about it some of the concepts you'll be learning while making the project itself and uh, once we are completing that okay you will be asked to submit your projects the projects will go into review once the review is completed usually it takes about 2 weeks after the end of a boot camp then the certificates will be sent to you on their respective email ids so that will be the process for the certification okay okay great Are we going to practice uh, React in Code Sandbox? Yes, Vijay. Uh, we'll be practicing React in Code Sandbox itself. Yeah, I will be explaining about Moon and Mean today. If we get some time, if you want, I will dive a bit into your data science as well. If somebody requests that, otherwise, we'll try to understand what goes on uh, as for technologies that you need to learn. to become a full stack engineer to call yourself a full stack engineer what are the different opportunities that are present as a full stack engineer and why should you opt to become a full stack engineer at the end of the day so that is all that we are going to learn in uh, today's uh, boot camp okay in today's class from tomorrow we'll be starting off with react okay it uh, will be hands on so i request you guys to at least if if you are not able to code with me no issues in that you can just keep a notebook and pen with you and uh, take down the notes okay so i am in the full stack development course okay cost of that's great to know that you will be joining us for the uh, training and internship program how much time do i have to invest on a daily basis to complete it thoroughly see the classes go on for 2 hours that would be live on zoom and then after that you have your doubt sessions so my uh, my session would be beyond the class uh whatever the teacher has taught you that particular day if there is any assignments or any projects that he has assigned to you just focus upon that don't do anything else just focus upon that that is more than sufficient just revision is important practice is important I think so. If uh, the classes go on for two hours, it will take you forty-five minutes to an hour to complete the assignments or revision that is required. Uh, along with that, my suggestion would be give at least two more hours. So because you have joined the program, you will get the recordings for C plus plus, DSA as well as competitive programming. So I would request to spend two hours of uh, your time on a daily basis. on uh, dsa and cp along with the uh, training as well as the practice so that would be my suggestion okay okay um so i had submitted a form 2 on the day 1 of boot camp and my attendance full will i get the certificates yes so we will get the certificates you don't have to worry about it okay 
ओके एनी द क्वेश्चन गाइज आई होप दैट आई क्लियर योर डाउट कॉस्ट ऑफ Uh, so I'm not able to open this video in a laptop. What's happening? I can't show. I think so. You need to clear your browser. Uh, from, just clear the cache from your browser. That should be more than sufficient. I don't think so. It should be a problem. Uh, while because this is YouTube, it should work on any of the devices that you are having. Okay, except if you are having a smartwatch, it won't work on that. <laughs> is internship important to get replaced in product based companies? Priyush, uh, see. Uh, when a product based company is actually hiring for any of the positions there are three things that uh, any company uh, looks forward to first of all is great communication skills that can be ignored as well i'm not saying that you have to have a very good communication skills but if you want to convey what is going on in your mind okay you need to have a great communication skills the second thing that they're looking forward to is a great logical uh, reasoning okay so for that they will usually go through your uh let's say dsa and cp that is the portion that they test your logical reasoning with and the third thing is uh, some kind of uh, like leverage that you have over the other students that is with your knowledge itself now of course you can gain that knowledge uh, on yourself as well like you could have competed j means and advanced just by learning from your house but it's not an efficient method it would take like almost one drop year to actually come to the realization for that and you don't have that much amount of time so usually what i suggest students is internship is one of the best way of learning something okay because you would be working on a product and when you are working on a product you can showcase that skills because that skill is something that is required in a product based companies where you are able to interact with others where where you are able to collaborate with others to creating projects that actually matter so that is how like you should be able to like go further with that okay mayank i will be starting i'm just waiting for everyone to join okay and uh, we'll uh, start accordingly okay Okay. Uh, Arjun, no issues in that. Okay. Uh, you can directly start from this particular class itself. If you are not able to understand something, just put it up in the chat, and I will try my best to explain it to you. Okay. What about data analytics and market scope? Uh, see, data analytics has a lot of market scope. Okay, first I will rate full stack, then I will rate uh, data science and uh, the number of job opportunities that are there right now in the market. Um, a lot of good pay as well. Big companies are hiring a lot of data uh, architects right now. See, the main uh, issue with data analytics is it's a lot of theory. Like you have to read, you have to learn, uh, practice as well. At the same point of time, your knowledge is not just limited to like in full stack. It's just limited to the practicality of the things. Okay, practical duty of the tools that you know. In data science, it's not just the practicality, but also a basic understanding about the algorithms that you are using. So yeah, it's a great. Like I'm also a data analyst. I've worked as a data analyst. I've worked as a full stack engineer. So I've worked as an MLE as well, machine learning engineer. So that is basically a hybrid between a data analytics guy and a full stack engineer. So it's a great market opportunity to learn at any point of time. Okay. Okay. So I think so. Not a lot more people are going to join us today. Okay. So uh, before starting React, I wanted you guys to understand the technologies that go behind making any of the websites and calling yourself a full stack engineer. So in today's class, it's uh, no, we are not going to start with React. React, we are going to start uh, from tomorrow. Uh, today, we are going to cover all the different technologies that you need to learn if you are aiming to become a full stack engineer. And if you have learned all these technologies practically, okay, in a project, uh, it's almost guaranteed that you will be able to get an internship or a job. Okay, that's as simple as that in full stack. In data science, I never say that because data science is a very vast field with a lot many number of technologies that are there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty hard because you will have to compete with a lot many number of people and it's the knowledge that you are able to gain that amount of time and the practice that you are able to do. So for full stack, we are going to uh, see all the different technologies that are there. We are going to understand uh, Moon stack, mean stack, lamp stack, 
what are the different stacks that are available and why you should be preferring mean over mern over mean or any other stack that is there even django and others as well that is the aim of today's class okay so and at any point of time if you guys are confused anywhere i will try to explain it as as simple manner as possible okay of course i'm not going to use any jargon so that you guys are not confused at any point of time but still um if you are stuck somewhere if you're not able to understand something uh do let me know in the live chat i will try to explain it in as simple manner as possible okay so shall we start guys please let me know should we start okay amazing so <clears throat> let's try to understand what are the different concepts that go behind let's let's look at the categories that go behind in making a entire website so first you need something to look at okay that's that's the front end of the website that's what you are able to go through as a user what you are able to see that is your front end of the website so that is called as the front end let me just mark it up right over here the front end of a website next is uh the business logic that goes around like when you are uh going through uh any of the particular let's say uh you are trying to log into a particular website so when you are logging in how are they able to check whether that particular credential is actually valid or not mm -hmm. when you're scrolling through your instagram page how they are able to suggest the people that you should follow how they are able to show you the post the likes and everything so if you are stopping your netflix on one particular uh, device and going to an another logging into that particular device they're able to show you exactly where you have stopped so all these different aspects that go around in creating the business logic for any of the websites uh, is called as the back end of the website this is not something that you are able to see okay for example the website that you are able to see is the front end the business logic is actually saved somewhere else on servers and uh, from there only the data is getting uh, thrown back to you so you are never able to interact with the back end of any website until unless you are a software engineer and you are actually working at that particular company so that is the second part of any website that is the back end okay the next two concepts are a bit uh, over the top. So for example, cloud computing, when you are having these servers, like I've already explained, servers are nothing else but computers that help uh, any particular industry to serve out to the users that they are approaching. So these servers are actually very costly. These are not like you are able to buy an Asus laptop and that is what you're going to use as the servers. So in any of the servers can cost around 1 lakh to even 7 lakhs as well. Uh, for example, uh, if you are ever joining the next bootcamp, we must be using Google Colab for that. So Google Colab is hosted on servers uh, via Google and each of those servers cost about 12 lakhs. The GPU alone costs about 6 lakhs when you're using uh, a, a server that is currently there. To set up a server in your own house uh, to cater to like a hundred users or even a thousand users is not just practical enough. So for that, uh, what Google, Microsoft or Amazon or other, device, other companies like Hostinger and everybody else is currently doing is... Uh, they have a lot of servers. They require a lot of services. Google is actually serving almost 13.5 billion people every single day. So to serve that many amount of people, they need to maintain a lot many number of servers that they have to have. And sometimes these number of servers are usually over, like for example, if they want to serve a 13 billion people, they will be keeping a number of servers that can serve up to 20 billion people. So these excess servers, they are able to rent it out to different companies like us. So we don't actually, so us as a company, we don't have, or you as a developer, you don't actually have to go and buy a server. You can just rent it out from these companies and you just pay about uh, what you're using. Okay, so for example, it will be an hourly rent or it will be a monthly rent or it may be a daily rent as well that you can set up according to your users and uh, you can rent these servers out for your own personal use. That is where cloud computing comes into being. I think so. You must have heard about these different terms. Okay, we will be diving a little bit deep into it as well. I'm just giving you an overview right now about what are the different things that a full stack engineer needs to learn. Okay, cloud computing. Okay, 
the next is like when you are renting out servers from uh, different companies so for example you are renting out uh, 15 servers from uh, amazon but you don't actually have to run 15 servers every single time maybe during diwali or maybe during eid you are able to have like uh, uh, 10,000 users on your website and you require 15 servers to actually ser like serve them at the end of the day uh, maybe on some days uh, like uh, the number of requests maybe like 10 or 20 itself okay so the number of users coming to your website always varies so it is not just practical enough to rent out 15 uh, you, uh, servers at any point of time to serve just 10 people you might want to downgrade it to like just one server on that particular day maybe the second reason is like whatever code that you are writing right now you have to share it with other developers as well for example i'm have i'm working out on my uh, windows laptop and you are working on your mac uh, i'm the backend developer or I, i'm a senior software engineer that you want to share your code with so to share that code to deploy that code the uh, computers that we are having is totally different you might you are having a different laptop with different versions of the softwares that you are installed different versions of technologies that you have installed and i might be on a separate version so how to control that how to make sure that if i'm sharing my code base with someone else he or she is also able to like run the entire application without downloading anything on their uh, uh, laptops or their devices without any uh, bugs or any errors popping into the any extra bugs or errors that are popping into their own laptop so to do that you are having something called as dockers and everything else as well we will be going into that now this entire department of managing uh, these containers uh, that are binding your code as well as managing these servers come into devops okay devops is a lot many number of functionalities this was one of the most basic functionality that i told you right now we will be looking at some of the other uh, things that comes into devops right now so i'm just giving you an overview that is devops okay so these are the four pillars that basically balance the entire full stack engineering at any point of time. If you know these four uh, things directly, you're one of the top candidates to be hired for any uh, full stack development role. Whether you apply for a front end engineer, back end engineer, DevOps engineer, cloud computing engineer, anything that you are applying to. Okay, so that is the major end uh, of what you need to learn at any point of time. Okay, I know that some of you might be familiar with all these things, but please bear with me. Uh, this is extremely important, okay, because without this, without having a very fundamental knowledge or all the different things that you need to learn, you will be lost at any point of time. You will be learning some things that are actually not important at the end of the day, okay? Okay, so let's start off with front end. For front end, uh, you need, if you are starting out, I am talking about an extreme beginner. Okay, some of you might be familiar with the concepts, some of you might not be familiar with some of the concepts. But if you are talking about an extreme beginner, let's try to first understand how these things interact with each other. Think about the entire website as a restaurant chain that you own. Okay, you are one of the owners of the largest restaurant chains, that, like five star restaurant chains that is there in India or abroad as well. So what are the different things that come into play? Let's, let's try to understand. Think about the restaurant where the uh, people, so for example, I am a visitor, I am a user, I'm coming to your uh, restaurant right now and to buy something. Let's, let's say like I'm coming to your restaurant to like have some Punjabi food or something like that. So the restaurant itself, what I am able to see standing inside your restaurant are tables, okay, are chairs. Okay, uh, I'm so sorry for uh, like the bad drawing. I'm not actually good at drawing. So then you are having some uh, decorations as well, some lighting, let's say, some fans. Okay, the fans and the lighting all look the same. Okay, so you are having various different decorations that you have kept into place, the tables, the chairs, the carpets, uh, maybe some reception area, so on and so forth. So everything that you are able to see and interact, everything that a user is able to see and they interact inside the restaurant is what actually is the front end of the restaurant itself. Now talking about the front end of a website, uh, all these websites that you are creating, you need to start off with learning some of the basic things as well. So you will start off with like, let's say HTML. Okay, your basics should be absolutely clear. Okay, you will start off with HTML, then CSS, then JavaScript. Okay, so these are the three basic uh, things that you need to learn. Now, learning this is of the no use at the end of the day, of course. 
because this is just like setting up the concrete for your uh, Burj Khalifa okay if you want to set up a Burj Khalifa you need a good base uh, that it can support everything upon so having the fundamental knowledge like this does not uh, like does not even have you qualify enough for a role at anywhere uh, whether you're considering a small startup or a big uh, product based companies but this is the foundations that you need to set up after that uh, my solution would be go with bootstrap css okay it's one of the live uh, like let's say frameworks for css that helps you beautify everything uh, in a much more proper sense like it's usually used for creating mockups as fast as possible uh, mockups are like a demo version of any website how it should supposed to look like okay so of course you're not going to uh, code everything from scratch so bootstrap was actually made by twitter but uh, right now it's relevance as well as it's uh, like different tools that it gives you is becoming outdated as of right now but bootstrap css makes a fo final foundation that you need to have after bootstrap css my suggestion would be go with tailwind css again it is something that has been built on top of bootstrap and uh, normal css as well it has the latest uh, implementations of SCSS uh, where your hierarchy is also taken into place. But uh, Tailwind CSS will help you. So for example, in Bootstrap CSS, your website won't look that nice. Okay, you would not be able to have a lot many number of changes that you can do with it, uh, visually speaking, like from a design perspective. But Tailwind CSS no, uh, will just build upon that. You will be able to have like very good quality mockups that you are able to get ready in a very short uh, span of time. Okay, like I'm talking about the beautification of the website itself. So Tailwind CSS is exceptionally important, guys, if you want yourself to become a good developer. Yes, Tailwind CSS is something that is not for the foundations. The foundation was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap. After that, Tailwind CSS is building upon your foundations getting you a knowledge what you can show to any of the companies that this is how i can quickly create very high quality mockups that your company can utilize and go further with your sprint okay so that is where tailwind css comes into play now this is basically the basics that you need to know then comes your libraries like react Okay, now of course you can uh, see Material UI is also good, but Tailwind CSS just like is the top. Like you can go and compare as well. If you're looking at Material UI or you are looking at Tailwind, you will be able to see the difference between the two. Let's 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 look at it right now. Let's go to Tailwind CSS as well as Material. Okay, so this is how material UI has been made as of this particular moment. So you are able to see the different types of uh, co components that you can create using material UI and just look at Tailwind CSS, the amount of customizations that you can do with Tailwind CSS and how well they are able to showcase it at any point of time uh is exceptionally amazing like this for example this is a very simple thing that has been created in tailwind css so you can have a lot many number of uh options that you can do and it looks more uh robust more, much more customizable and uh yeah so it has a lot of many you know like most of the developers are currently using this so my suggestion would be to go further with that itself now coming back to the program so you can either choose react or angular my suggestion would be go with react it has a much more uh, wider applications as well as much more companies are actually hiring for react rather than angular see in learning any technology you should be very comfortable with one of the things your priority is getting placed or not if your uh, priority is getting placed then your priority should be okay is this particular technology uh, used by most of the companies that is the question that you need to ask now react is being used by 80 percent of the uh, companies that is there and the rest 20 percent is distributed within various different technologies that are there so react has a much more greater market share whether it compares to developers or the community or the companies as well that is what my suggestion would be go with react instead of angular okay and once you have learned react angular would come as a second nature to you so you can actually learn angular in a week that is the kind of uh, power that you will be able to develop so my session would be go with react 
after learning react you are having your uh, there are various different uh, topics that come under the um, branch umbrella of react maybe redux okay you are having your uh, uh, hooks okay in react redux hooks uh, routing and there's so much more topics that come under the entire category of react once you've completed react your front end development is almost done like this is this is what i will consider a front end engineer to know as, uh, when i am hiring for any of the companies so that is the uh, amount of things that you need to learn and understand now by learning and understanding this is not physics or chemistry where you are able to just read through the notes and that's it that's that's all that you have to do learning these technologies means having good quality projects to show forward to for these technologies for example html css javascript should have one uh, project under it bootstrap css should have one project under it tailwind css should have another project under it react redux hux should have a complete separate project under themselves so these are all the technologies that you need to learn and by learning i mean doing as well like practice is the utmost important uh, topic when it comes to development especially okay okay the next is the back end so once you have entered into the uh, like restaurant you have whatever you are able to see that was your front end now what about the back end what what exactly cooperates into the back end itself now the back end think about it as the kitchen so you are having your gas stove okay then you are having your utensils that are there maybe some plates that are stacked up maybe you are having some other stuff as well into your kitchen and so on and so forth so the basic kitchen where everything gets processed okay that is your back end at the end of the day for any website that is basically your uh, a particular code base that is able to authenticate people that is able to provide the information provide the data that you need all the business logic that goes around in your uh, company that is able to ex <clears throat> we are able to execute in the back end itself okay now back end development uh, so for example the kitchen whatever happens in the kitchen okay how does it gets communicated to the uh, user so for example you have ordered some food so you are right over here a waiter comes to your place let's put up a bow tie right over here the waiter asks so okay so what you would I like to have you will say that whatever is special today so you will order that so the waiter then communicates this entire job, whatever you have ordered to the kitchen okay the kitchen would then uh, have a fridge right over here inside the fridge you are having a lot amount of fruits vegetables uh, maybe some spices they will take this all data out from the fridge they will process that data into the back end that is your kitchen itself once the process is done they will have your food ready for you whatever you have requested to the back end now that food will again get served back to you so this process of the waiter and the server who basically waiter takes your request <clears throat> i'm so sorry the waiter basically takes your request to the back end where the entire process takes place then whatever you have requested according to that a response is generated that is your food and that response is then taken back to you by the server so that here the server is the person not the server server the person who serves you the food so this entire the waiter and the server combo is what constitutes an api okay application programming interface okay so application programming interface is basically this api that is the talk that goes around now these are json responses okay so uh, the waiter and the server does that as any like use uh like for the front end or the back end can, can you guys just think about it if I change the front end of the restaurant, like the, how the restaurant looks like, or if I change the, how the kitchen looks like, or how how the kitchen is actually processing the food, whether a human is processing the food, or whether a robot is processing the food, whether your Chinese is being cooked in a wok, or maybe in a frying pan, does that has any, uh, uh, like slightly change that makes upon the API, that that is the uh, waiter and the server, can you guys let me know? If I'm changing the back end or if I'm changing the front end, that does it has any uh, like application or any change upon the API itself? Can you guys let me know? Exactly, no. Like there's no uh, diff like if I'm changing the back end, if I'm trying to change the front end, there's no actual uh, change to the API. The message like your request is still the same. That give me a chicken butter masala. Your uh, response is just the same. Like you're getting a chicken butter masala on your plate. So, ha ha. 
Susie is also into the market right now. <laughs> she is my golden retriever. Ha ha. You you go from it. Take a bat. Okay. So that is the basic ideology about your front end and the back end. Okay. If I'm changing the technologies in the front end, if I'm changing the technologies in the back end, it has no applications up upon the API. The response and the request is JSON. It's the same language. It's it's always going to remain the same. So that is what I'm saying. That although these technologies that you are learning or whatever technology that you're using is of little to no importance, that basically just helps you get a better placement or apply to better companies. Uh, that saying that okay, you are using this. I actually know this from the start. so that is the only thing that matters you will when you are going to into a company not they are not going to use react in all their products they are not going to use uh, node js in all these products every single part even in a small product like maybe uh, youtube you are having some node uh, js some django some go some other uh, languages as well in which different parts of the backend has been made so you need to understand this that technologies are something that you are building to just showcase that yes i am able to develop products the rest the companies will be taking care of it okay so in the back end the technologies that you might want to know is starting with node js okay you want to know express okay you might want to know like mongodb as well So MongoDB is basically a database. Think about the fridge, the fridge that has all the uh, fruits, the vegetables, the spices inside of it. That is basically your data that is currently there. So you need a database where your data is being served. So for example, you are requesting that okay, I want to authenticate myself. I've given my email and the password. How is it able to authenticate you? It goes to your backend where it is being cross verified with the uh, current email address and the password that is already there in their fridge. That is your database itself. if and the backend basically checks if this is correct then authenticated so the request will be yes you are authenticated so response would be that you are authenticated yes you can go with mysql as well but right now so there are two different concepts uh, when it comes to databases you are having a mysql that is your rdbms and then you are having nosql that is uh, your mongodb and the other counterparts as well now nosql is much more faster in applications yes mysql will be used in places where there are transactions into concern okay because it handles transactions much more efficiently when compared to nosql databases but for the rest of the cases whether you are using something like uh when you are building something like a uh, facebook clone or an amazon clone or something like that you will be working with uh, no sql databases like mongodb so mongodb is exceptionally important for this particular condition okay uh, yeah django also comes into the back end itself django is one of the technologies that uh, is widely used whenever there is any application of Uh, videos so for example your vimeo your youtube are all built up on django as the main component yes other uh, technologies are also there but any kind of video compression or video exchange is usually handled using django itself okay okay uh, so let me just open this up so i'm not missing out on any of the points i want to make sure that everything is going on in the proper manner okay so we have covered uh, the basics okay you have okay ha huh. when you are going with uh, css as well there are a lot many number of things that you would like to learn in css so don't forget about responsive designs that your website should be able to work on an ipad or a mobile phone or a desktop or a computer or even a tv anywhere you are looking at your website it should look beautiful it shouldn't look like your mobile version has just opened up on your laptop it it would look ugly as so you need to make sure that your website is responsive enough grid and box layout so there's are some of the concepts in css itself okay get github and version control of course you need to learn get github and version control because uh, you would have a lot many versions of your website that you are currently working maybe a production version maybe a deployment version maybe a version where you are testing stuff out so uh, that is the portion where you need to learn about get github and uh, like version control of your website okay moving on to your uh, react so front end web development like we have already learned about it react 
so component lifecycle model so that is a concept that comes into react how your components get updated with time what is the state management and all those kind of stuff okay so state management you can do with redux as well okay functional components webpack using third party components styling in react routing in react react hooks connecting to a backend so these are all the things that you need to learn as a react developer uh, and that i consider as like that is what you need to learn and then you can just continuously practice upon it to uh, just sharpen your skills okay when it comes to backend web development like i said you need to start off at node.js mongodb express okay once you have done that you need to learn about microservice architecture as well when you will be starting to do it you will be creating monolithic applications now just think about it uh, maybe uh, you are having just think about an architecture for instagram so most of the people what they are doing is they are going into the instagram account they are logging into their instagram account they are going through the stories seeing the posts of the people that they are liking that's it that's the most that they are doing the uh, explore page is being used by uh, a less amount of people when compared to the other pages so what would be practical enough every time like almost a billion people are using the normal applications like uh, like authentication and uh, looking at stories and posts and uh, almost 250 uh, 250000 people are just using the explore page so it is better to have different uh, backend services that are running at any point of time instead of having a single application that handles the entire backend so not just having one chef for you to do all the cooking that is there you need to have like at least four or five chefs that are uh, compliant in like maybe one is compliant in uh, chinese food one is compliant in uh, punjabi food one is compliant with like maybe some mexican food and so on and so forth so if uh, the request for punjabi food is high then you just need to buy another rent out another punjabi person if you want to have the request for chinese food is high you just want another chinese guy to handle it and so on and so forth you don't want to scale up your entire uh, kitchen like i need to have two kitchens right now to cook the entire food that is just not applicable enough so this microservice architecture is something that you guys need to learn so whenever you will be starting off with backend please remember don't go with a monolithic architecture that won't be of any help to anyone nobody wants a monolithic architecture to be built everybody wants a microservice architecture to work with okay um are you guys able to listen to me properly uh, somebody's saying that my voice is not audible please let me know that <clears throat> am i audible guys audible okay great so then it comes to validation and error handling so whenever you are working with any uh, programming concepts any you are building the front end you are building a back end you need to know how to handle like how to validate and handle all the errors that you are having at any point of time so and that is basically the process of testing any uh, particular software those test cases how you are going to think about those test cases how you're going to form those test cases how you're going to implement those test cases are basically the part of validation and error handling so that is also something that you need to learn the next is authentication and security so this is a bit into uh, cyber security this is uh, like the starting point for cyber security but uh, like you need to first of all make sure that your entire application is secure nobody is able to come from outside so basically like if i'm selling a product i don't want like uh, someone to be able to have some kind of error that is there some kind of uh, bug that is there to be able to utilize that bug to place as many uh, products that i want like i can place order for like a thousand products and i won't be charged for anything these are bugs and everything i don't want somebody to be able to access my backend at any point of time so because that's my business logic if my business logic is lost then there's nothing uh, from for any other company to just like copy the entire thing up so for example one of the famous stories for this is coca cola never uh, uh, like put up a patent for their uh, drinks the reason to that is as soon as they are putting up a patent even if they are putting up a patent they would have to release their recipe for coca cola to the entire world and they don't want that they want to keep it a secret so they have never released a patent for their products at any point of time so that's the same thing that goes on with backend as well you never want anyone else to uh, like access your backend at any point of time okay okay so next we come to devops okay so devops is basically like uh, 
like i said if you are having a food you want to parcel this food to your house so that parcel needs to be like it should be packed properly so that even if you're opening it up it's still hot you are still able to utilize it you're still having a great taste out of the food okay it shouldn't be like i'm just putting up in a uh, plastic uh, bag and just throwing it out to your face like eat this uh at any point of time i need to package it properly i need to ship it to you properly so, so for example if i am a cook and i need to give uh, my whatever i have cooked to another cook at any point of time so i would have to place it in a proper container and give it to him so that he is able to continue working from right over there so all these different things is what dockers and containers are for so dockers and containers help you in packaging your code properly in containerizing your code properly to be shipped it may be shipped to another developer for testing purposes it may be shipped to another developer for developing purpose it may be shipped to the cloud to deploy it at any point of time so these containers basically have all the versions that your application needs so that a, no matter which the device they are working upon your application works the end exact same way for example my uh, laptop and the server that i'm going to develop uh, deploy to okay these both may have different hardware different software that are currently there inside of it these containers ensure that no matter where this particular piece of code go if it's it was working fine on my laptop it would uh, work fine on any computing device so that is the basic uh, use for dockers and containers an amazing technology to learn very few people actually learn it okay so building and manipulating single and multiple containers with docker docker volume docker compose synchronizing an application with docker containerizing an application with docker securing wing sync okay of course you need to make the docker secure as well nobody should be able to hack inside the docker okay then you are having automation with ci cd so at any point of time whenever you are developing a product you are having various versions of the product that are running at any point of time you are having maybe a starting version maybe the version that you are currently developing so it has a lot many number of bugs in the side of it you are adding new features to the uh, so that is called as a development uh, product okay then you are having development stage then you are having maybe a testing stage where you are actually testing out the bugs making sure that there are no bugs in the application okay and then there is a production stage that is the production level code that is currently being utilized by your users so to all these three codes have a lot many number of disparities between them okay so for example when you are adding any new um, uh, like item inside your basic uh, any new feature maybe a search feature that you are able to add inside your application so that is basically what you are doing on your development uh, side itself okay now that particular change is not there on your production side neither on the testing side once you have completed that you containerize it ship it to the uh, testing stage your testing stage will make sure that there is no uh, contradictions with the previous stage itself so for example before this particular version whatever with the version of the application was what are the changes that you have made to that particular application then those changes will be tested at any point of time and that is what is going to be going ahead now see uh, kubernetes is basically uh, utilizing dockers to make sure that they are, are running at all times okay there's no uh, problem with kubernetes think about kubernetes as like you're having a branch manager okay so you are having a branch manager you are having five different outlets in bangalore for your restaurants there should be a manager who is able to manage okay so for example this particular person needs more computing power this particular person needs more uh, space this particular uh, restaurant is going down i need to have a like i need to replace it with something else and so on and so forth so that is the major role of kubernetes to be able to handle all these docker containers that are there okay ci cd that is what i was saying ci cd is continuous integration and continuous deployment okay so that is the entire like linking the entire process of your development stage your testing stage and your production stage and to be able to make sure that any of the changes done on the de development stage are being reflected uh, accordingly to the rest of the stages nothing is getting messed up your versions are in uh, in line and you can just like in one go push your code to production with changes that are there so all these different things are basically what comes and the ci cd the ci cd service setups uh, writing ci cd scripts automating deployments and testing with ci cd so it shouldn't be the case that when you are making a new change in your product without even testing it it shouldn't go to the production stage it should come to the testing stage it should be tested thoroughly and then only it should be taken to the production stage where it is automatically deployed you don't have to look into the deployment on your own so all these things are basically that comes into ci cd continuous integration integration between the different stages that you are having and continuous deployment that is your application is always up and running okay
okay so that basically comes into devops uh so this is the kubernetes section right over here kate commands multiple container apps with kates ingest to handle traffic deployment with kates uh, custom domains and ssls so that is also something that you would have to work upon and then of course when you're working with uh, docker or uh, kubernetes you are going to deploy it at any point of time that is where your cloud computing uh, comes into being your cloud computing usually what i prefer telling students is go with AWS, AWS has the largest market share with most number of features that are there. If you're able to learn and conquer AWS, you can learn any other cloud platform uh, in like a matter of days. You don't have to waste your time because most of the other platforms, whether it be Azure, whether it be GCP, whether it be like hosting or any other platform that you are planning to deploy your code on or planning to learn, all these are derivatives from AWS itself. AWS is the largest symposium of, of technologies that you can actually uh, take up. And but so for example, like uh, GCP is almost 60%, uh, like 60% of what AWS is. So if AWS has a hundred features, uh, GCP will only able to have 60 features because they are continuously developing it right now so that is what uh, i think so is the most important thing and aws has the largest market share any of the technologies that i'm currently talking about i'm talking about from the perspective of like it has the largest market share it has the uh, largest number of uh, companies that they are using that particular technology any other technology you can learn in a matter of days you don't have to worry about it but your job is to get a job at the end of the day get a placement and see, uh, this is a trial and tested uh, method. Like this is not something that uh, I have developed it like yesterday and showing it to you today itself. For the past one year, we have got almost 800 students placed in different companies. So like I have a very good understanding, like we have collaborations with Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and many other companies who are directly right now hiring through us. So I know because these are the companies that suggested us all the uh, technologies that they require. And on the basis of that, we created this entire PPT that uh, or PDF. Okay. Sorry that you can use now to learn any of these technologies. You need to remember, always be practical. Okay. Take up uh, any of the, look, for example, right now you're working on Amazon clone. Take up that Amazon clone first, when you're starting to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, build an Amazon clone using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, that's different. Right? When you have learned bootstrap CSS, tailwind CSS, utilize the same clone, make another clone and another Amazon clone itself using those technologies. When you're going to react, make the same thing using react. When you're going into backend, try to create the backend for that particular application using the technologies that you know. When you're going into DevOps, try to utilize DevOps to have an array of uh, things that you can develop over it. Then deploy it over the cloud. This makes sure that you have worked on a product at the end of the day. Learning how to build a product is much more important. Okay, learning technologies anyone can do. But to integrate those technologies together to create something like that is far bigger than a single small project that you are able to build is the most important thing at the end of the day. Okay. Okay, don't worry that I will share this PPT or this PDF. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Okay, so that is what I'm trying to make you guys understand. Technology does not matter. What matters is your knowledge, your practical applications that you have performed. Uh, learning full stack web development on your own is a pretty huge task. According to me, like for me, I, it, I spent about two years learning full stack and I realized that I could have done it like in three or four months itself, uh, if I had proper guidance. So like that is totally different, but these are the topics that you need to know for becoming a full stack engineer. Uh, the average CTC for a full stack engineer that we were able to get for our students was about uh, 15 lakhs an annum with the highest of course uh, was uh, 58 lakhs by Google. So that is totally different uh, for the data scientists people. It was about uh, 12 or 13 lakhs. That was the average package that we were able to get for data science people. And of course, full stack engineers are paid a lot more than um, data science people. Okay, that that is for a matter of sure. Okay, because data science has not, not a lot of practical projects that you can actually work upon. That is the reason why data science guys are paid a bit less than first stack people. The discrepancy is not that much. I'm not talking about like one is getting paid one crore and the other one is getting paid pennies on the dollar. So I'm not talking about that. Like the disparity is like two or three lakhs itself, but still like that is the fact that full stack engineers will always be paid more than a data science uh, person. Okay. Will this be relevant in four or five years? Uh, Avishik, this has been relevant for the past uh, 10 years. So yes, it will be relevant in the next four or five years itself. 
okay uh, is software engineer role and full stack engineer role both the same uh, see in most corporate world uh, yes these are considered as the same role itself okay, because as a software engineer you are working on software it may be an application it may not be a particular uh, website that you are working upon it may just be an application that they are using internally as well so a software engineer works upon various different stuff but yeah if you are a full stack engineer you can of course apply for a software engineer position as well at any point of time okay will there be any separate workshop for ui ux designing uh shriyansh we are planning upon that right now we have a very awesome ui ux expert as well as a designer that we have in our team so we are actually planning upon this we are actually developing it it most probably won't be live it will be pre-recorded uh workshop but uh yeah we are uh, we are planning upon that as well okay Okay, so this uh, PDF is actually available on our website. Like you can just go to uh, devtown.in. Okay, from there, whatever course that you want to like, just go through the syllabus of, for example, full stack development program, you can directly download the syllabus from right over there. You will be able to find all the information that you're looking forward to as a full stack engineer. Now, please try to remember this, whether you are a software engineer, a full stack engineer, data scientist, any other technical domain that you want to enter into, C++ or Java, uh, choose between these two languages, then competitive programming and data structures and algorithms is compulsory. It is compulsory. Okay. You don't have any other, uh, option. Okay. It is compulsory for everyone to learn data structures, and algorithms, competitive programming and C++. You cannot escape that loophole. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Ramesh, if you think WordPress, see, WordPress is like, uh, let's say, a table and chair. It cannot replace a proper car. A car cannot replace an aeroplane. An aeroplane cannot replace a, a shuttle, okay, a space shuttle. That's the same with WordPress as well. WordPress is just a table and chair. It cannot replace a, a space shuttle at any point of time, okay? Is there a great uh, scope in cloud computing? Of course there is like uh, GCP is exceptionally GSP and AWS are always hiring a lot of computer, uh, cloud computing engineers from our end as well. We got like seven students placed as cloud computing engineers in GC, uh, in AWS. <coughs> the package was of like 24 lakhs. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I think so. My uh, throat is not well. Okay, will no code web tools replace HTML and CSS? Uh, no, actually not. Because uh, like I said, HTML, CSS right over here is as uh, well as like, it's just the basics that you need to know. Like you need to know that to be able to learn React, how to style React, you need to know that. So of course you need to learn HTML, CSS at any point of time. Nobody is going to develop their websites right now, a production level website in just HTML and CSS. So that has become out of question as of this particular moment, but yeah, no code is not going to replace any of these technologies. Is Visual Studio Code sufficient for coding? Yeah. It is sufficient for coding. I used to prefer Atom before VS Studio Code, but uh, Atom had a lot minor adjustments that I had to do on my own. So I was getting fed up with it. So right now I have also changed it to Visual Studio Code itself. It has a lot of uh, many of pre-customized options that are there and I don't have to spend my time to figure out those cost, uh, customizations on my own. So yeah, but Atom is also a great, uh, like a beginner level IDE that anyone can use. Okay. Is CYCP mandatory? Uh, Sunil, uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Sumit, Sumit, I had answered this question yesterday or day before yesterday as well. CPC, uh, when you are giving any J means or J advanced, it's, it's, it's physics, chemistry, maths is not going to help you out in your college life, but you still have to give that examination to be able to get the best college that you want. Similarly for the big companies out there, it's just an entrance examination to allow you sit for an interview. So CP and DSA will help you clear that examination out. Once you have cleared that examination, it is then these concepts that are, are going to help you get the placement. But before that, the exam itself is going to be on CP and DSA. That's the main uh, particular question. Okay. Uh, will your course of cloud computing with AWS will give a better base of cloud computing engineer? 
Yes, Vyansh, of course. So that is why we have developed that particular program. Full stack developer, should I prefer Java language? Uh, see, Java and C++ when you are comparing between them, uh, both languages are the same. Okay, if you are looking at the syntax, you will be able to identify that. If I'm just changing two, three lines right over here, the like you won't be able to identify which is the C++ code and which is the Java code. So you can learn any of the lang languages upon your preference, whatever you prefer, you can continue with that. Okay. So what are the skills that are required for an SD? Like I said, again, any, like if you want a software engineer, a software development engineer, a full stack engineer, data scientist, any of these programs, any of these positions, if you are applying for DSA, CP, one of the languages, whether C++ or Java, you can choose between them. And then one core domain, it can be full stack, it can be ethical hacking, it can be data science, it can be cloud computing, any of these, one of these domains you should be able to master. That is all that you need for an SDE, SE or any other uh, like programs that you want to go. For a front-end uh, developer, is it enough to learn JavaScript or should he learn Java also for DSA? Uh, like I said, again and again, any engineer, if he wants to go into a good tech-based company, he has to learn DSA and CP. He doesn't have a choice. Okay. Is lead code not enough? Um, if you're going with lead code, it's a great platform to, so I'm also a very good lead code supporter. Like I have practiced my entire life on lead code itself, but giving uh, some of the uh, tests on code shift is also important. Like because lead code is something that you're using for practice. Okay. That's the difference when you're going into an examination. So whenever you were learning for your J means and advanced, you were referring to books, you were learning from different uh, study material as well, but you were giving mock tests as well to prepare yourself for the examination. Treat code shift as those mock tests. Treat lead code as your practice uh, arena. So that is how I usually uh, prefer. CP is competitive programming. Which is better lead code or GFG for DSA? I would prefer practice it from lead code itself. Lead code is a trial and tested thing. Like for example, we right over here in the training and internship program, we train the students on lead code for exams. We take it on code shift because we understand the importance uh, behind this. Uh, see what we have developed right over here at DevTown. So like, uh, I usually put it out as a challenge to most of the people who are coming to the, uh, boot camps and everything. I have a challenge like at any point of time, uh, when we created this, so we as DevTown are a nonprofit organization. That is also one of the reasons why we are organizing most of the things for free. And even if we are charging for something, it's like almost the bare minimum that we are able to charge. So being a nonprofit organization, uh, it feels good to be able to give back to the community that was able to give me so much at the end of the day. Okay, what I am right now is due to the community itself. So it really helps me a lot to give back to the community. Now learning any of these technologies is something that will take a lot of time. Okay. It is not as easy as sipping just warm milk directly out of the container. Okay. It's, it's not as easy as that. Okay. You have to give a lot of time. You have to, um, like work on most of these technologies uh, for a very long period of time to understand them properly. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So as a front end developer is JavaScript enough or DSA or should I learn if you are learning DSA, see the, there are two different languages. Okay. One is the development language that is JavaScript, Python, all these are development languages. The other two languages are C plus plus and Java that is used for your computer programming DSA. Never confuse between these things. Okay. DSA for DSA, you need C plus plus or Java. Don't do it in Python or JavaScript. It's not, it's not a good option. Okay. Because at later point of time, you will be suffering a lot okay. that that is my uh, suggestion for you guys. Okay. Are you guys able to understand up till now? Please let me know.
Are you guys able to understand up till now? Please let me know that. Where should I uh, practice writing code, VS code or lead code? Uh, see, VS code is uh, an IDE, okay? Uh, and lead code is a platform. It's totally different. Like, you can go and code on lead code, copy paste it and paste it on, uh, sorry, VS code and copy paste it and paste it on lead code for submitting. Lead code is not a place to write code. It's a place to practice. Okay, so you can practice from right over there, okay? Can you explain a bit more about the campus ambassador program? Do we have to pay a fee, any prerequisites? The campus ambassador program is just you representing us in your colleges. That's it. Like it's not uh, any course or something like that. It's just you helping us out, build a community. That's that, that's, that's it. Like there's nothing else to it. <clears throat> How much time is uh, needed to excel at DSA and CP for a second semester uh, student? Uh, see the program that we made. Okay. So we tried it out with like various different. So in the starting, the program was of six months. It was too long for the students. Uh, it was taking a lot of time. We reduced it down to two months. Then we thought that, okay, none of the programs were getting finished in two months. It was taking at least three months to finish it up. So my suggestion is if you're doing it on your own, it will take over a year. If you have the proper right guidance by the people who have actually done it, it will take you about three months off. A lot of hard work. Okay. Nothing is easy. It's, it's not easy. See, there are two types of people. I've already told you guys talented and hardworking. If you are talented, good enough for you, you are going to crack every single thing. If you're not, and you know it, then you have to enter into the second department of hardworking students. That is how you're going to make it in the world. So full stack web development with Django and React.js is uh, enough for getting a job. See Amit, uh, let me understand this. Like I need, I need to understand this from Amit itself. Uh, Amit, can you answer me about this particular question? I'm telling you guys the pathway that you need to walk upon right now at any point of time to get a good placement. Yes. You can replace any of those technologies with Django. Okay. For example, you replace Node.js and Express with Django at one particular point of time. But how are you going to integrate it with, with Docker? How are you going to integrate it with uh, CI/CD? How are you going to integrate it with the cloud computing portion? That won't be easy because for Django, I have researched a lot. There's not a single course that is currently there that addresses all these problems. The second point is Django has a small user base when compared to big companies. Like very few of the big companies would be working upon Django. So that limits the number of places that you are able to send your application to. You need to understand this first of all. Okay. Yes, so far we have understood, but uh, we want you to explain this for becoming a full stack engineer or a developer and to hit 20 lakhs per annum. What are the requirements? Again, the requirements are very simple. There are three requirements. You should have a great logical reasoning and communication that you can develop with data structures and algorithms and computer programming. Okay. To like pass the examination, then you should have a great uh, developer uh, profile set up for you. Okay. That if you are a full stack engineer, you should be able to understand front end, back end, DevOps, cloud computing, have project to showcase the entire knowledge that you are having. And the third is you should start applying to different companies as soon as possible. Like you shouldn't wait like, okay, I will, when I will pass out, then I will start applying. No, if you have learned it in your third year, start applying to companies in your third year. If I learned it in your first year, start applying to companies in your first year itself. If you've learned it in your second year, start applying it in the second year itself. Apply to companies. Most of our students, like uh, some of the students were in first year, second year, they got like your internship and your PPO options right over there because they did a great work at learning at the end of the day. Okay. Is there any time limit in coding rounds of interviews like Java would make it worse than using CPP? Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's why I always support Java, uh, C++. Like I'm a C++ user. I always support that. Okay. But there are some people who are like, you nah, know, I've already learned Java. I don't want to learn a new language. I want to continue with Java itself. That's also great for you. You'll just have to have a great typing speed. The second is yes, there is time limit in competitive programming. That's why I always suggest practice on lead code. 
give your exams on uh, like practice exams on uh, code shift because you will have like one hour to solve three questions maybe three hours to solve six questions in your examinations and that would be like in one sitting you cannot like have like okay i've solved one question i will go and party for 20 minutes and then i will come back and solve the next question you'll have to solve that in like one hour itself so you need to understand that as well okay is it possible to learn full stack in one month as available on youtube and practice the whole year no lakshita it's not possible if you are even devoting your 100 percent time it is just not possible to learn entire full stack in just one month we take almost three months of two hours of classes on a daily basis with just holidays on sunday to be able to complete and usually that also spans out to like 3.5 months to complete the entire full stack so i don't believe that you would be able to complete full stack in just one month okay DSC is taught in college, so we don't need to do it again, right? Because the DSA in second year. DSA that will be taught to you in college will be in C. You won't be writing C code when you're going into your examinations, okay? You'll be working on C++ or Java. So that is where you will have to redo the uh, DSA. And DSA is the fundamentals that will build, that helps you to like do computer programming as well. So you'll have to have a lot of uh, things to do, okay? See, attendance I'll be showing whenever I feel like. Okay, don't ask for attendance again and again. My second sem is going on uh, to the end of July. I know only C and C++ till today. Tell me, am I late to crack good placements? See, you're not late, but you need to start immediately. Like you need to start as soon as possible, if possible. Don't wait. Don't, don't wait. Like if you're delaying by even one day you're losing an opportunity to get a good placement you need to start as soon as possible okay shubham so what about web3 okay so before aiming to buy a lamborghini try to first buy a motorcycle okay that will be my suggestion Web3 is built upon Web 2.0. If you are not having a good understanding about full stack engineering, learning Web3 is absolute bullshit. Nobody is going to hire you. Okay. At the end of the day, so you need to have a good understanding about full stack and then you are able to build upon your Web3 technologies. Okay. So at the end of the full stack development program, will we be able to apply for a job and get a good placement? Of course, but like, First of all, we try to help you get placed through our end itself. Like we have a lot of collaborations with a lot of companies. So they approach us directly like for 20 positions, uh, 15 positions, and we give out these students who are performing well throughout the program. So what we have done right now is, for example, like uh, for our program, for example, you are enrolling. So the cost for the program is like 6,000 rupees, including GST. So that is the current cost. Uh, what we have done is uh, there are two costs that are associated with us. For organizing these free boot camps, we charge like 500 rupees and then the rest of the amount after taxation comes to 5,000 rupees that goes to the instructor that is going to teach you. So what we have done is, uh, if, uh, uh, for example, if there's a second year or third year person who is going to teach you, you will also feel cheated. So what we have done is that we have brought people from Google, from Amazon, from Flipkart, from Microsoft, from various different companies who are going to come to the class every single day the two hours of live classes will be held on zoom they will be teaching you throughout the program for three and a half months and this also helps us get placements for the students because if you're doing well and the mentor is able to see that he directly approaches you with placement offers so most of our students are getting placed like that and then we have some industry collaborations that we are able to get you placed through and then we suggest that, okay, then right now you can apply to different colleges to get a better, different companies to get a better package after that. That is how we usually go through the entire uh, program. Uh, see, it's never late to start anything. Okay. But it's a, uh, how can I say, what do you call pop in English? It's a, uh, what do you call pop? Like, are yeah. Uh, I'm not able to remember. Sin. It's a sin not to start. Okay. It's never late to start anything, but it's a sin not to start. You should be starting as soon as possible. That is my, uh, like concern. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm able to hear Susie as well. She's saying that uh, it's time to go for the walk. I'm waiting for you. I'm like, dude, just wait. I need to complete this particular session first of all. <laughs> so how to manage college and studies and uh, self-study? See, uh, you have 24 hours. A human being requires six to eight hours of sleep. You have college from like nine o'clock or eight o'clock to the evening five or six. You have a lot of time after that. Okay, you can actually learn a lot, many number of things if you are not doing matragasti at the end of the day. I don't know what matragasti is called in English. <laughs> but I hope that you guys are able to understand. Should I go for content designing as an internship? Uh, Goku Black, of course, love the name. Huge fan of DBS and DBZ. As well as DB. Hated DB in the starting, but yeah. Okay, so... Yes, it's a good option, but if you are in your first year, but in your second, third and fourth year, don't go for that. It does not have a good future. That is my basic concern. If you're planning to go into tech, that is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, so what's the price of a full stack development course? Enroll in this month with the batch start. Uh, see, uh, one thing I want you to guys to know if you guys are interested, I don't know how many of you are interested in the program. So it's not a course. So course is just recordings that people are giving you. What I've developed is we have collaborated with various industries to bring you a training and an internship program. So the training program, let me just show it to you. So the training program is basically that goes on for almost three and a half months, three to three and a half months. We assume that none of you actually know anything. Okay, we start from the at most basics. Uh, just the only prerequisite is you should be familiar with English language. That's all that you need to know. Okay, so that we are also able to start from fresh. The mentors will be teaching you. So the classes are like two hours of live session on Zoom every single day after seven o'clock in the evening because most of the people who are going to teach you are working in some company. So they come back at six and then start teaching you at seven. Uh, after the class is over, there is like one hour of doubt session where you can go to the instructor, talk to the instructor and sort your doubts out. If there is any other doubt beyond the class as well, you can approach them. The instructors will be from Sony, Oracle, Geo, Golden, uh, sorry, Geo, uh, American Express, McKinsey and company. Okay. The cost for the same, uh, it covers C++, it covers uh, DSA, it covers computer programming, it covers full stack entirely, whatever I've told you guys today, as well as the cost, including every single thing is 6,000. Okay, that is the cost like for the bootcamp students or rest of the students who are not a part of the bootcamp. It's 10,000, but we usually give out discounts based upon like if there is any financial problems that are there. But for the bootcamp students, it's 6,000 for the entire three months. Uh, the next batch is going to start, I think so in the next uh, five, six or 10 days, like in a week or so, we are going to start off with the next batch that is going to be taken up by, I think so, uh, someone from Google, that if I'm not very uh, wrong about it. Okay. Um, yeah. So that is the price for the same. And at the end, you will, so the projects that you will be working upon. Uh, there are a lot of many number of projects that you'll be working, working upon for the biggest project that will be your Zomato application clone. You'll be developing the front end in react, the back end in uh, MongoDB, Node.js and Express. You'll be deploying it over AWS. You will be orchestrating it using Kubernetes and Docker, as well as you will be setting up an entire CI CD pipelining for the product. So we'll be building an entire product that you are able to do. There will be two sessions that will be there on uh, LinkedIn optimization, GitHub optimization, mock interview experiences, and so on and so forth. There are a lot many number of projects as you are able to see, like task management, APIs, uh, personal portfolio, book my show clone. These are some of the other projects that are there that will be done. Okay. Yeah. 6,000, including the registration, if I am correct. Okay. The technologies are also great. Uh, the batch is going to start from the third. Okay, so I think so this hasn't been updated. From the 30th of this month, I think so the batch is going to start. Uh, the certificates that will be given to you will be in collaboration with Google as well. You'll be getting uh, certificates via Google as well as DevTown. You'll be getting letter of recommendation, internship completion certificates. So these are all the things that you'll be able to get at the end of the entire training and internship that is there. Okay, so there's a lot many number of things that are covered uh, on the website itself. If you guys want to check it out, you can go to devtown.n to check the entire thing. 
uh, for full stack yes placement is also guaranteed the average package that we are able to get is 13 lakhs per annum that is the average package that we got for the previous batch as well as the for uh, like placements the companies and everything you will be able to see the graduates you will be able to uh, check up on most on all these things as well okay how to apply for a bootcamp student discount okay so you guys don't have the link for the same do you guys have the link for the same guys uh, for the bootcamp student discount i thought my team had circulated the link data science internship program will start from 20th may okay that's i i have no idea like dude like my basic concern is with teaching so i am into developing the program with different companies and uh bringing it to you as well as teaching as well of course okay so okay i'm so sorry for that i thought the links had been distributed for the students let me do one thing um uh, let me just share the link with you guys give me a second guys uh i have the link with me i thought my team had already shared with it with you Give me a second. I will just blank my screen up so that you guys are not able to see my mail. There will be a lot of shitty emails that I'm having in my mail as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think so. I have the. Uh, give me a second. Let me just check. Okay. Yeah. I'm having two of the links with me. One for full stack and the other one for data science. If I am not wrong, this should be the links that are there. So let me just share the link with you. First of all, let me know, like, see, uh, the number of seats is actually limited. So for example, for full stack, I think so we have 20 seats remaining right now. For data science, we have 25, 25 or 26 seats remaining as of this particular moment. Uh, so how many of uh, you guys like are interested in that so that I'm able to get an idea about like, okay, if we need to have a new batch or not. Uh, yeah, of course. So all the classes that are there on uh, React, oh, sorry, on uh, Zoom, those classes will also be uh, recorded as well. So the recordings for the same will also be provided to you. And all the videos that the recordings will be there, you will have lifetime access for the same. Because we want to make sure that you guys actually know. So for example, if you are registering with the uh, full stack web development program, at the end of the program, we give you all the recordings of uh, C++, Java, DSA, then you are having CP, then full stack classes that were going live as well as the data science classes. So that if you want to learn data science at any point of time, you don't want to waste a lot of money to like actually pay for another course. So we just give it out for free so that you guys are able to learn as much as possible. Is BTEC mandatory? No, we have students from BSc, MCA, we have students from MBA, we have students from graduates, we are, we were having students who were in civil, chemical, mechanical, a lot, many of them actually got placed in Goldman Sachs, I don't know why, but <laughs> Goldman Sachs took a lot many of students from us. Okay. So how many of you are actually interested uh, for the same? Uh, could you let me know so that I have some idea about like uh, how many seats do we require? Because if it's over 20, then I will have to create a new batch. Yeah, of course, you can be in your first year, fourth year, graduate, passed out, anything. Like it's not necessary. Okay, so I'm... Uh... A lot many of you are interested. Let's me do one thing. Uh, those students who are interested, I'm giving you my personal number. Do not call on that particular number. I never I rarely pick up any of the calls. But message me on WhatsApp. Okay. And I will send you the link for the same as well. So my number is 7016416673. If you are interested in the same, message me on WhatsApp and I will help you out throughout the process. So actually I was not able to find the link. Okay, so that's just the reason why. 7016416673. That's my WhatsApp number. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So whatever courses are currently going on, the recordings for all the courses will be given to you at the end. So that is like how we work on. So that is uh, my number. Okay. If you want, you can. Okay. So somebody even called me right now. Don't call me. Okay. Just message me on WhatsApp and I will help you out with the entire process. I'm right now in a bootcamp. I will not be able to answer the uh, phone, of course. Um, and as for the links, if somebody is interested to register themselves right now, I'm giving you the links for both the, uh, 
like the okay so i don't think so things links would work okay but still uh, i've also given you the links as well as the uh, <clears throat> uh number as well so if you are interested just message me on whatsapp send me 16416673 Anyways, else as well, if you are uh, like having some doubts, if you are having some concerns related to your uh, learning uh, methodology as well, if you want some suggestions, I'm always up as a mentor to be able to help you guys out at any point of time. Okay, you have to pay just once. You don't have to pay again and again. Why? Why? Why would you be paying again and again? Like that's the whole point of these programs. <laughs> yeah. So the, the links are not working. No issues in that. Uh, you can directly take up my number. I will directly message you right over there, okay? Uh, with the links mm -hmm. as well, if you want. <coughs> I'm so sorry for that. <clears throat> Is DSA from this program more than okay? So let me just inform you that as well. So C++ is made by somebody from Cisco. Your DSA is made by a particular person from Google, Hashden. <clears throat> as well as from Barclays and your CP portion is made by Rithik who is currently in the world top 100. He is uh, 47 or 46 on Code Chef and Code Forces and indeed uh, has a rank of 104 on Lead Code. World rankings, I'm not talking about India. So these are the people who have created the entire thing. Okay. Uh, Anuj, uh, we have a multiple batches. So right now the nearest batch is going to start from this month. We might have a next batch as well, but the seats are always limited. So for example, if somebody is applying and wants to be getting shifted to the next batch, we can of course do that for you. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so Udacity courses are not good for DSA. Okay, don't uh, prefer Udacity courses. They have been developed for an US based population, not for Indians. India has a lot more amount of competition when you compare it from there. Okay, you might have heard about it as well. Like somebody who was not able to perform well in the BTEC went to US and got a placement in Microsoft and he was like, dude, like he was not even getting selected in TCS. How is that possible? The competition there is a lot less <clears throat> when compared to Indians. So that is the most point. Okay, okay, so I will show you the attendance link right now. Uh, I will have to find the attendance link right now. <laughs> okay, so let me just do the link. There's so many number of uh, forms that I'm having as of this particular moment. I'm also a bit confused. <coughs> I'm so sorry if my voice was not well. Okay. Um, I don't know why this is happening to me today, but I will try my best to drink some hot water and get my throat up and running for tomorrow's session on React. Change the name, otherwise students will be like, sir, day three ka attendance bhej diya. I'm like, like, just wait. <laughs> <clears throat> so the link is on your screen right now. You can take a screenshot for the same. Again, this is, uh, mm, kya bolte hai? The link for today. Try to take up a screenshot. YouTube ka video hai. You can skip a bit behind as well to access the link. Okay. I don't know why I look like Carrie Minati. Many people have, I don't know if it's a compliment or something like that, but yeah, many people have told me I look like Carrie Minati. <laughs> I went and saw some of his videos as well, and I was like, dude, he looks like me. <laughs> okay, no issues in that. I've given you my phone number as well. Do message me on WhatsApp. Okay, please don't call me. Uh, I, I, uh, like I will have to change my number if that's the case. Okay, but I've given you the WhatsApp number as well. You can directly send me a message on WhatsApp. Uh, whatever your question is, whatever your problem is, I will directly help you out with the same. Always up and running as a mentor at any point of time. Okay, that is my role at the end of the day. That is why we started DevTown. Okay, why we have like 35 mentors from almost the top 10 companies in the entire world. Because we aim to provide mentorship to the students. Okay. Sure, if you have any other problems as well, uh, you can of course uh, contact me on WhatsApp. Okay. Camera Minati light. <laughs> okay, sure. Like I, I, I totally agree with you. Okay. Of course, like I'm not an entertainer. I would like to become an entertainer, but I suck at uh, singing. I suck at playing games. I suck at just like everything that I do. But yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, Sovik, this is a YouTube video. You can just scroll back and watch the link again. Okay. Uh, for the next upcoming program, I think so. It's going to start in a week. I'm not very sure. You just contact me on WhatsApp. I will be able to give you further details on that. Uh, so if it's starting in a week, then like in the next three or four days, we'll be closing down the uh, registrations. If the number of seats get filled, then also we'll be closing down the registrations because we cannot accept more than that number of students because a mentor has to give personalized attention to each and every student that is there. So that is the reason why. Yes, okay, that's that's the catchphrase for uh, Karim and Atiyama, right? He says it like in a very um, sly manner, like, yes, <laughs> I saw that video as well. <laughs> uh, Sumit, uh, see, the thing is, like, if you are able to pay us in cash, <laughs> then we'll be able to reduce the price because we also have to pay GST. Uh, it is like 4,000 goes directly to the instructor who is going to teach you because nobody from Google is going to come and teach you for free. They charge us a lot. So it's like 4,000 rupees per student that they are charging us. Then uh, we have to pay like 1,200, 1,300 to uh, government for GST. We have to pay 300 rupees or 200 rupees for uh, like the payment gateway. And the rest 500 amount, we keep it for organizing these boot camps to get the material and everything so that we are able to organize the bootcamp. So that is the reason why <clears throat> you would never see any type of advertisements for our program because we just don't have the budget and we are a non-profit. So we are just having one batch per month that we are able to start at the maximum. Sometimes like one batch in two months. So we are non-profit. We are pretty much okay with it. If we are able to help out the community, that's great. If you are able to provide placements, we know that we are able to do a good, great job because of what we have previously done. So that is the reason why. Your web hub is coming very soon <laughs> to the bootcamp. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can pay on a monthly basis uh, MD, but uh, I think so. There's some charges associated with that as well. If you're paying on a monthly basis, there is some charge associated with that. I'm not very sure, but yes, we have like a monthly installment plan placed as well. I will be waiting for the UI UX bootcamp. Surely, Shreyash, I think so. The bootcamp is almost ready to be launched. I'm not very sure. Like the, uh, uh, Devesh, is Kanish still there? Kanish, kya kar pe? Okay, so he's still there. So he's still working upon that. <laughs> okay. Uh, what will happen in the Hogwarts Wala Bootcamp? Okay, so in the Hogwarts Wala Bootcamp, that is, <laughs> we will be working upon, we'll be learning Python from the scratch. Then we'll be going towards uh, computer vision. And uh, then we'll be moving out on uh, <clears throat> the project itself. So students were asking about a UI UX or a design bootcamp. Huh? You want to have one? <laughs> sure. So we'll definitely try to have a bootcamp on UI UX as well. Okay, don't worry about it. What is that scratch? So scratch basically <clears throat> means there is a pr uh, assumption that we are taking on our behalf that you don't know anything. Okay, you are not even familiar with HTML. You don't even know the meaning of web development. That is what we mean by scratch that we take it everything from the most basics to the most advanced level that is possible. So that is what we mean by uh okay why i'm shaking so basically this is a rotatory chair so i love to just like go like this <laughs> i'm so sorry i will not move my okay, i will not move my chair anymore <laughs> okay <clears throat> so we'll be having our project as well so we'll be creating a cloak uh like invisibility cloak in that using python and computer vision that will be the uh what we'll be having <clears throat> Mohammed Rahil, uh, just message me on WhatsApp and I will try to adjust something for you. You don't have to worry. Full stack bootcamp. Uh, we never have a bootcamp for full stack because like in seven days, there's no possibilities. It takes almost three and a half months of two hours of classes every single day to learn full stack. So it's just not possible to learn full stack in like seven days. Like it's just like, even if I'm giving 24 hours, you won't be able to learn anything. <laughs> that is the reason why. Are you Gujarati? No, I'm not Gujarati, but I've lived like almost 18 years of my life in Gujarat itself. I've lived in Bapi, I've lived in uh, Jamnagar. So that is the reason why. Bootcamp for cybersecurity. We had a bootcamp on cybersecurity, Dipesh, but the response from the students wasn't that positive for the bootcamp. Like most of the students that were coming were from 11th and 12th, and we don't want to cater to those type of people. Like our main goal is like graduates, like who have at least passed their 12th. 
दैट इज वाई तो आफ्टर लर्निंग सी प्लस प्लस वॉट टू डू नेक्स्ट फॉर गेटिंग अप डेटा प्लेसमेंट आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड सी प्लस प्लस दैन डी एस ए दैन सी पी एंड वन डेवलपमेंट एस्पेक्ट दैट इज मोर दैन सफिशियंट या द फुल स्टैक इंटर्नशिप कॉस्ट सिक्स थाउजेंड ओके सो दोज हु आर इंटरेस्टेड कैन डेफिनेटली मैसेज मी ऑन माई व्हाट्सएप नंबर एंड दोज हु जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आस्क एनी थिंग दैट कैन ऑल्सो मैसेज मी ऑन व्हाट्सएप आई विल डेफिनेटली ट्राई टू हेल्प यू Yeah, I've already told them. Like, so we have a blockchain engineer as well with us, Devish Vishwakarma. He will be taking up one of the boot camps on blockchain. So he is also telling me that, dude, if somebody is asking about Web three, tell them that they have to learn Web two point zero, then they are able to get into Web three. And as I said that, I also know that I have already told them. <laughs> okay, are you going live on Insta today? Should I go live on Insta today? I was planning for tomorrow. If you want, I can go on Insta today as well. There's no issues in that. so how to upgrade communication skills try to talk in english try to talk to your parents try to talk to your siblings try to talk to your friends in english okay that is the first step try to watch some netflix uh, shows in english okay that also helps a lot in developing your uh, stuff okay is the data science internship for beginners of course like any of our programs whether it be the boot camps whether it be the training and internships whether it be the webinars that we conduct in different colleges or even live events that we conduct everything we have under one assumption that nobody knows anything we have to start from the utmost basics okay we'll definitely try to bring an ethical hacking and cyber security boot camp in the future but right now the interest in that particular thing is a lot less than we anticipated but in the future yes we will definitely as soon as we are able to see the a lot more number of people asking for the boot camps definitely come up with something okay okay i have answered a lot many number of questions i need some water so let's end the session right now okay let's have some questions for tomorrow as well and uh, okay so thank you so much guys let's meet tomorrow and those who are planning to join us in the training and internship program i will be able to meet them very soon on a daily basis because i will be one of the mentors uh, otherwise as well we'll meet in the one of the future boot camps so thank you so much guys thank you good night